Welcome. This is my summary of the NOAA September 2018 Global Climate Report. September of 2018 was the fourth warmest September on record. It was 1.02 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, which was 0.1 degrees centigrade higher than August was. Now I'm showing you here a percentiles map, not a temperature map, but a percentiles map. That shows you the departure of the local temperature from the average. White is average, and if there's a red shade to it, it's above average. If there's a blue shade, it's below average. As you can see, there are only two pixels here that have record cold temperatures for the month, whereas there are 82 pixels on this plot that have record warm temperatures for the month. This indicates that the planet is still warming. Also note over here in the Eastern Pacific, the area circled in green has filled in with higher than average temperatures. This is the beginning of the El Nino that was forecast to occur in November or December of this year and will likely go on until the summer of next year. No matter how you slice and dice these temperature figures, we're getting a very consistent picture. On the left here, we're comparing the time history for the uh, land and ocean. The ocean was the fourth warmest September on record and the land was the sixth warmest September on record. On the right, we're comparing the northern and southern hemispheres. Both were the fourth warmest on record. And so the consistent picture we're getting is that the planet is continuing to warm. To add to our impression that the global temperatures are continuing to rise, we now have had 405 consecutive months with an above average global mean temperature. Another way of determining whether the planet is warming or cooling is to compare the number of record highs with the number of record lows. If there are more record highs than record lows, then the planet is warming. If there are more record lows than record highs, then the planet is cooling. So let's see what happened in September. We had 7,687 record highs compared to just 2,063 record lows. That's a ratio of 3.7 to 1. Year to date, we've had 87,269 record highs compared with 38,201 record lows. That's a ratio of 2.3 to 1. Still yet a warming situation. I've added September of 2018 to the matrix I've been creating over the last few years. And as you can see, for most of the year, it's been hovering between 4th and 5th place on the overall ranking. Now, depending on what happens in the last three months, that means that 2018 will likely be either 4th or 5th, perhaps 6th, depending on what happens in those last three months. So let's take a look at the upper atmosphere. We'll start with the lower troposphere, which is not the surface temperatures. It's a temperature taken at an altitude of about 4 kilometers. This is the so-called satellite data. Now, two groups do this analysis, UAH and RSS. They both find a positive anomaly but between 0.14 and 0.1 degrees centigrade for September. That makes it respectively the 15th and 12th warmest September on record, depending on which group you believe. But interestingly of all, they both find a long-term positive, i.e. warming trend, of about 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. Now, the interesting thing here is that UAH is run by two of the most prominent climate skeptics, Roy Spencer and John Christie. And despite what you might hear from a lot of people on YouTube, they are saying in their analysis, they are finding a strong warming trend in the lower troposphere, very similar to that of the surface, which is about 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade. Next, let's take a look at the mid troposphere, which is an altitude of about seven kilometers or about the top of Everest. Again, the same two groups find a very similar result of 0.09 degrees centigrade anomaly for the month, which makes it the 17th and 19th warmest September on record, respectively. And interestingly, again, both groups get a very similar positive trend in the data of about 0.12 degrees centigrade per decade. Now that's lower than the lower troposphere, but you expect that that temperature change should get lower and lower as you go higher in the atmosphere. But yet again, we have a warming trend in the mid troposphere. Finally, let's take a look at the stratosphere, which is an altitude between 10 and 20 kilometers, depending on what latitude you're talking about. Both UAH and RSS find a negative anomaly. This area is cooling, 
but between 0.35 and 0.45 degrees centigrade for September. That makes it the 9th and 10th coolest September on record. And they find a long-term cooling trend of about 0.25 to 0.31 degrees centigrade uh, per decade. Now, the only reason that the stratosphere can be cooling is it's receiving less infrared from below, which it can only be explained by the presence of additional greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which are absorbing and scattering that radiation. So this is one of the pieces of evidence that it's greenhouse gases that are causing global warming that no other uh, of the theories can explain. Well, let's take a look at what's going on in the United States. Coincidentally, it was also the fourth warmest September on record in the US, with temperatures uh, looking at the map on the left, uh, at record levels in northern Florida, along the Atlantic seaboard, in New York, um, Ohio, West Virginia, and also in the desert southwest. As far as precipitation was concerned, the western half of the country was unusually dry, the eastern half of the country was unusually wet. Next let's turn to the cryosphere, and first we'll deal with the Arctic uh, sea ice, and this is the 17th consecutive year that we've had below average uh, sea ice, and it's the seventh lowest uh, September on record. Next we turn to the Antarctic, and this is the fourth consecutive year that we've had below average sea ice in September, and it's the second lowest uh, area as yet recorded in Antarctica. We should take a look at what's going on with the El Nino-La Nina cycle. At the moment we're in Enso neutral conditions but uh, it's edging towards uh, El Nino. El Nino is defined when this ratio is 1, uh, La Nina when it's minus 1. And you can see that we've been in positive territory for most of this year. Uh, and uh, we're edging towards an El Nino condition at beginning in November. Now, the models forecast that it will remain in positive territory, at least for the foreseeable future, but may not sustain El Nino conditions for very long. Finally, let's see what the sun was doing in September of 2018. The activity level was lower than the previous month by quite a bit. But interestingly enough, the two models that the SIDC puts forward are showing very different predictions for the next few years. The, S, uh, the CM model shows a very early onset of solar cycle 25, whereas the SC model shows a long low uh, solar minimum. I tend to favor the second of those and my prediction remains as I've said for the last few months. So in summary then, September of 2018 was the fourth warmest September on record. We've had 405 consecutive months with temperatures above the 20th century average. High temperature records are outpacing low temperature records by a ratio of 2 to 1, indicating that we still have a rapidly warming planet. We are currently have ENSO neutral conditions, but we're edging towards an El Nino. It probably will start in November or December, but it will not be very intense and will not go on for very long. The sun is quiet, entering towards solar minimum, probably sometime in 2019 with the nadir in 2020 and the onset of the next cycle in 2020-2021. Until next time, goodbye.